Ferry and Edward War. Drip was born on March 6, 1959, in Salem, Indiana, to George and Diana. War Drip. He was his parents' firstborn child and had one brother. There are no news articles or television reports of Wardrobe experiencing any type of mental or physical abuse. During his childhood, he dropped out of high school. In the 12th grade, 1978, at the age of 19, Wardrobe joined the United States National Guard. After six years of service, Wardrip was released from the National Guard under a less than honorable discharge. The discharge was due to smoking marijuana, disorderly conduct, and multiple absences without leave. During his military service, he was not deployed into combat duty. In March 1983, at 24 years old, he married his first wife, 20-year-old Jonah D. Jackson. The couple had two children together. The marriage was tarnished by wardrobes, drug and alcohol abuse. This same year, he worked as a janitor at the Wichita Falls General Hospital. Within 12 months, he was promoted from janitor to orderly. Due to his addictions, he could not maintain employment and was bouncing between jobs. Jonah's parents helped the couple financially by paying their rent and buying their groceries. Tired of war drips, lack of responsibility, and addictions. In December 1985, Jonah separated from War Drip, taking the children with her. She soon filed for divorce, which was granted in October 1986. Terry Lee Sims worked as a part-time EKG specialist at Bethany, a hospital in Wichita Falls, Texas, attended nearby Midwestern State University. Sims and co-worker Lisa Boone had finished working there. Evening shifts at the hospital at approximately 11 p.m. on December 20, 1984. When leaving work Sims rode with Boone to a mutual friend's house to exchange Christmas gifts. Sims was planning on spending the night at Boone's residence on Bell Street so Boone could help him study for her final exam the following day. Unexpectedly, Boone received a call to return to the hospital to work the midnight shift. She drove Sims to her residence and gave Sims the key to her apartment, dropping her off at approximately 12.30 a.m. on December 21, 1984, at 7.30 a.m. Boone returned home after working a double shift at the hospital. After repeatedly knocking on the locked front door and receiving no answer, Boone went to the landlord and was given a key to her residence. When she gained entry, she saw that the living room had been ransacked. Boone immediately ran back to her landlord's residence, asking for help to find her friend Terry. The landlord entered the apartment and found Sims lying on the bathroom floor in a pool of blood. She had been sexually assaulted and stabbed to death while Boone was away at work. Sims had heard War Drip causing a disturbance and went outside to investigate. Wardrobe lunged at Sims, and she ran back into the apartment, locked the door, Warded targeted Sims for no apparent reason, and broke the door down after she locked him out. War Drip, standing at 6 feet 6 inches and weighing 220 pounds grabbed Sims at 5 feet 3 inches, 94 pounds, and assaulted her because of her resistance. War Drip bound the victim's hands with an electrical cord. Sims was estimated to have lived several minutes after the attack was over. Police officers preserved a semen sample and a fingerprint found on Sims' shoe for future analysis. Over a decade later, the print and semen were positively identified to be those of War Drip. Sims was buried at Crestview Memorial Park in Wichita Falls. Tony Jean Gibbs, 23, disappeared on January 19, 1985, while employed at Wichita General Hospital. Gibbs was no more than 5 feet 1 inch tall and weighed 94 pounds. Ward Rick came across Gibbs at about 6 o'clock in the morning after he had been out walking all night. He knew Gibbs because she was a registered nurse iron at the same hospital where he worked as an orderly. Gibbs offered Ward Dripper a ride, and after he got in her car, he began hurling her around and screaming at her. He then forced Gibbs to drive down an isolated dirt road to a field. Two days after her abduction, 
Her car was found within a few miles of the hospital. On February 15, utility workers found her naked body in a field at the southwest corner of West Gench Road and Highway 281 in Archer County, one mile south of the Wichita County line, a day after she would have turned 24. Gibbs had been sexually assaulted and stabbed. Gibbs had a total of eight stab wounds, three on her back, three on her chest, and two defensive wounds on her left forearm and thumb near her body. Police found an abandoned school bus where her murderer likely conducted the attack. Authorities discovered Gibbs's clothing inside the bus. Gibbs had initially survived the assault and stripped of her clothing. She had managed to crawl 100 feet before she died after the killing. Wardrip then abandoned her vehicle after legally parking it at Van Buren and McGregor Streets in Wichita Falls, less than a mile from his residence. Four days after his body was discovered, Wardrip quit his job at the Wichita General Hospital. Danny Laughlin, 24, was initially suspected of Gibbs' murder because he often rode his motorcycle near the area where she was killed and because he had met her at a nightclub days before she was killed. He also failed a lie detector test and made suspicious statements. Lachlan was then tried, even though Lachlan's comparison as DNA with DNA from the semen at the murder scene was unsuccessful, and only circumstantial evidence was available. After two days of deliberation, the jury was deadlocked, which resulted in his release from custody. Since only one of the 12 jurors believed Lachlan was guilty, prosecutors decided not to retry Laughlin. Gibbs was buried at the Clayton Cemetery in New Mexico, two months after he murdered Tony Gibbs. Wardrobe traveled to Fort Worth, Texas, intending to look for a job in Fort Worth. He met 25-year-old Deborah Sue Taylor Nay Huey in the early morning hours of March 24, 1985, at a bar on East Lancaster Street. Taylor had been at the bar with her husband, Ken Taylor, but Ken left early because he was tired. Deborah remained at the bar ward drip approach Taylor and asked her to dance. She accepted his request, and the two spent time together in the club. He then asked to drive her home, which she agreed to while outside. Wardrop attempted to make sexual advances, which were rejected by Taylor. This infuriated Wardrip. He killed Taylor, leaving her body at a construction site in East Fort Worth when Deborah failed to return home. By the following day, she was reported missing by her husband. Her body was found by two construction workers on March 29, 1985. Taylor's murder was not believed to be related to the other four cases until Wardrip confessed during questioning after his 1999 arrest. Before Wardrobe's confession, Taylor's husband was believed to be the culprit. He had passed three polygraph tests but was still considered a suspect by police. Suspicions about Taylor had destroyed his life as members of his own, and his wife's family turned against him. Taylor was buried at Shannon Rose Hill Memorial Park in Fort Worth. The date of death is listed as March 24, 1985. On September 20, 1985, Wardrobe abducted 21-year-old Ellen Blau in Wichita Falls. The abduction occurred as Blau was walking alone to her vehicle after leaving her evening job as a waitress. She was also a student at Midwestern State University in Wichita Falls. Once abducted, Wardrobe, forced to drive to a secluded area where he eventually killed her by strangulation, he stated. In a Cold Case Files episode, he had broken her neck, leaving her body in the secluded area. He drove her car back into which it falls and abandoned it along with her purse. Her blood was also discovered on the inside of the vehicle. A county road crew employee found Blouse's body in Wichita County on October 10, 1985. Once her body was found, it was in a very advanced state of decomposition, to the point where she could only be identified by comparing dental records. She may have been sexually assaulted as her underwear had been pulled down. Still, the condition of her remains prevented accurate analysis. No semen samples were available. 
One of her friends had lived in the same apartment complex as Wardrobe and had stated that she felt uncomfortable around him. Liao was buried at Bernie Jacob Memorial Park in New Haven, Connecticut. The date of death is listed as September 20, 1985. On May 6, 1986, Wardrobe killed 21-year-old Tina Elizabeth Kim Brew, a recently befriended waitress. He went to her apartment and suffocated her with a pillow because she reminded him of his ex-wife. Before discovering her body, neighbors told police that they had seen a white man 6 feet 2 inches tall, with dark brown hair and wearing a baseball cap leave the complex. In the death of Tony Gibbs, Danny Laughlin was ruled out as a suspect because he did not fit this description. A few days later, on May 9, 4, Drip called the police from across the state in Galveston, threatening to commit suicide. Once the police arrived, he confessed to the murder. He was sentenced to 35 years in prison. He was paroled in December 1997. He moved to Texas, where he remarried and became an active supporter of the local church, gaining a good reputation. He eventually got a job at a screen door factory. Kim Roo was buried at Will Garner Memorial Park in Vernon. In 1999, Wichita Falls Detective John Little began a cold case investigation of the unsolved murders of Terry Sims, Tony Gibbs, and Ellen Blau. DNA recovered from the scenes where Sims and Gibbs were found later matched, indicating that both victims had been killed by the same person. Detective Little's investigation revealed a previously unknown link between Wardrop and Blau. One of his fellow officers revealed that while Wardrop was on trial for Tina Kim Bruce's murder, he admitted to knowing Blau this lead had not been investigated. When it emerged, Wardrop himself stated that the agency would have been able to find a suspect much sooner if they had paid a little more attention. Detective Little found additional evidence linking Wardrip to the three unsolved murders. Blau had lived one block away from Sims, and Wardrip had been employed as an orderly at the same hospital where Gibbs had worked as a nurse. At the time, police had no DNA sample from Wardrip, so Detective Little used a simple ploy to obtain one after being paroled from prison for Tina Kim. Bruce murder Wardrip was working at a factory during the war. Drip's coffee break Little approached Wardrip and asked him for the paper cup from which Wardrip had been drinking so that Little could spit out the tobacco, which he had been chewing. An analysis of Wardrip's DNA obtained from the coffee cup matches the suspect's DNA in Terry Sims and Tony Gibbs's cases. Wardrip was arrested. While he was in custody, he confessed to the murders of Sims, Gibbs, Blau, and the additional murder in Fort Worth of Deborah Taylor. In the 1999 war, Drip was sentenced to death for the murder of Sims and three life terms for the other killings. In 2008, a federal magistrate recommended that the death penalty be overturned because War Drip received ineffective defense in his trial. On June 14, 2011, the Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals reversed a lower court ruling that ordered Texas to either give war, drip a new sentencing trial, or agree to provide him with a life sentence. The case was sent back to the U.S. District Court for reconsideration in December 2014. The Texas Court of Criminal Appeals dismissed War Droop's appeal regarding inadequate representation. As of 2021, Wardrip remains on death row at Polanski Unit near Livingston.